So this is the ATSP Hierarchy, a system I devised to train clients across a broad spectrum of disciplines, and as a guiding principle behind the notion of superfunctional training and my own approach to working out and enhancing human performance. It's something you'll be hearing a lot more about in a future project that I can hopefully reveal very soon. So the aim of this system was to design a method that could be used to train a person for anything, and to reverse engineer a diverse range of complex skills to output specific exercises and training recommendations, or to help train a client from any competitive sport or facing any issue relating to their fitness at any age. So the system applies to skills both mental and physical. It can also inform a personal training program towards a specific goal, as part of a larger system that I call the Ability Tree, and we'll get to that in a moment as well. So ATSP stands for Specific Attributes, Traits, Skills and Proficiencies. In this context, a proficiency is a particular practice or discipline that you wish to excel in. So for example, martial arts, acrobatics, archery, programming, surfing, running, baseball, public speaking, singing, painting, powerlifting, strongman, contortion, escapology. Such a proficiency is normally comprised of various kind of sub-skills and techniques. For example, the martial artist needs to be able to perform a number of complex movements like roundhouse kick, cross, etc. to dodge and to maintain exertion for long periods. A programmer, on the other hand, needs to think creatively, problem solve and focus. They also need to remember a wide range of different commands and syntax rules. Each of these skills and techniques require specific traits. A trait could mean cardiovascular endurance or it could mean rotational strength. Finally, specific physical attributes are the exact physical requirements necessary for those traits. So for example, rotational strength is dependent on well-developed muscles that contribute to the serape effect the obliques, the rhomboids and the serratus. Thus, in order to become a better baseball player, like a batter, we could consider the skills and techniques that they use, and then the traits that underlie these. Rotational strength, hand-eye coordination, grip strength, reflexes, calmness under pressure. Traits can be broader or more specific, for example, rotational strength is a trait, but so too is strength or explosive rotational strength. The more you can narrow down the trait to what is specifically necessary for the desired skill though, the more benefit you'll get from the exercise. And then with this information we can then look at the specific attributes that underlie those traits. So powerful obliques, rhomboids and serratus anterior, as well as fast visual processing, strong forearm flexors, shoulder mobility and even more obtuse elements such as low levels of cortisol and high levels of DHEA. Now we know what the individual needs to become to achieve what they hope to achieve. We can prescribe, therefore, specific exercises to help them get there faster. We might get the baseball player to perform parloff presses, medicine ball throws, reaction exercises and vision exercises. Important to understand at this point is that the pyramid, with proficiencies at the top and attributes at the bottom, actually works both ways. That is to say, practicing the proficiency itself and the skills that comprise it will develop the necessary traits and attributes, just as the reverse is true. So a martial artist can increase hip mobility and rotational power if they want to give their kicks more power and speed. But likewise, just practicing the kicks will naturally improve their hip mobility and rotational power. Training does not replace practice, but should be supplemental and aim to enhance strengths and fix weak points. Everything filters up the hierarchy and it trickles back down. Likewise, it's important to underscore that attributes alone will not be sufficient to develop skills and proficiencies. There are other inputs besides training that can enhance an athlete or individual at each level. This is where the ability tree comes in, which is not simply for exercising and training recommendations, but rather includes lifestyle advice and things like that. The ability tree outlines the following inputs. Genetics, practice, study, training, lifestyle and diet. However, it's not limited to just these. For the baseball player, considering these inputs means we can also offer lifestyle recommendations and even diet ideas to reduce stress and increase focus. We might suggest particular books to offer specific knowledge. We can now observe any impressive feat or ability and break it down to the constituent parts we need to get there. The same is even true of career options. The Ability Tree is a broader application of the ATSP hierarchy designed to provide wider reaching suggestions for a broader range of interventions outside of training. So in addition to taking into account knowledge and the additional inputs, we also place goals at the top of the pyramid here. In other words, why do you want to become adept at a certain practice? Do you want to win a gold medal, become rich, move abroad, be happier? 
This then allows us to choose the proficiencies or abilities that we need to get to those goals, hence ability tree. If your goal is to become a famous author, you first need to write a book, then the practice or ability you need is writing. Want to write a lot of words per day? Then we need to improve focus, and we might do this by looking at developing executive control regions of the brain, such as the anterior cingulate cortex. Meditation is known to increase blood flow to that area, so we might prescribe this as an effective form of brain training in service of that goal, using the ability tree to get there. We could also suggest a sufficient amount of sleep and nutrition, etc. We also need to consider the other inputs at each level of the hierarchy, so learning about writing, practicing writing, reading to increase the vocabulary, the list goes on. But what if you don't have a specific goal? What if you want to be super functional, ready for anything, a polymath with the full spectrum of physical capabilities that we talk about on this channel, endurance, strength, speed, focus, intelligence, and mobility? In that case, we work backwards. We work from the bottom of the pyramid up. We select the exercises and the tools that provide the most different attributes to offer the widest variety of skills, to make us somewhat proficient even in practices we've never had the opportunity to try. This is why I build my workouts around bang for buck exercises that provide the widest range of benefits, that develop multiple attributes at once to deliver the widest range of different traits and skills in the most efficient manner. I also like to consider what I call the super trait, and this is a trait that makes learning every other skill that much easier, and that even helps you to gain other traits more easily. That includes things like energy, which is a force multiplier because it lets you do more, and things like plasticity. These are then built from their own attributes. So for instance, plasticity at least requires large amounts of BDNF and even animalism. But we'll go into that in more detail in a future video. I hope you found this video useful and interesting guys, and I hope you can find some use for the ATSP hierarchy yourself, whether devising your own training plans or helping a client. It's something that's been really useful for me myself. It's a little peek behind the curtain as it were. All I ask is that if you use this, then please give me a shout out when you mention the system. Oh, and sub and like if you want more like this. And if you want a ready-made training program based around these principles that aims to develop every aspect of human performance alongside a huge ebook that goes into depth on all these topics, then be sure to check out my ebook and training program, Super Functional Training. The link for that one is in the description down below, and there's still a big discount on right now whilst we're all still in lockdown. Man, I thought this discount was going to last like a month. I certainly misjudged that one. Hope you're all safe and healthy, guys. Thank you so much for watching as always, and I'll see you next time. Bye for now.